All right, I promised y'all a video about this uh, rocket mass heater and how it works. So here we go. Uh, first thing about this is the firebox. You'll notice it's small. It's only uh, eight inches wide there to there. It's about 10 inches from there up. And it's only 14 inches deep back to the back. And if you look back there, right there you can see an opening in the back wall. And what that does, it's a venturi. What the venturi does is takes the hot gas from the burning in here, runs it through a smaller uh, opening, which increases the speed and it gets to the other side and starts burning again really hot because all the gas that's going through now gets burned hot. Now you've also noticed right here, which I stuffed extra pieces in there that doesn't stay, but right here is a secondary air. I don't have it done yet, but clear... <clears throat> clear back there on the back end, I've got a piece of two inch pipe that will stand up in there. And besides the burning that's going to happen because of the door and the opening like a regular stove would, the secondary air puts extra air into the back into the chamber so that it creates a rocket, which is where the rocket part comes in because it adds extra air in to burn all that excess gas which is your smoke and fumes so it does that now this is built if you've looked at the other pictures and videos you've seen that my firebox is built out of fire brick and then i've uh insulated it with this uh it's called super wool uh yeah and it's um a safer type of insulation, high temp insulation besides ceramic. Ceramic is glass, no matter how you look at it. So as you use it, as you cut it, you're breathing in glass. So anyways, what I've done, I wrap this up and it insulates it. So it keeps that burn chamber and then my riser, which is this, keeps that well insulated so that you get a very good burn. Now this riser here, I've still got another three stack of bricks. So it'll come up about that much farther to make this because the size of the chamber, which I can link you up with uh, Vandenberg's uh, Peter Vandenberg's charts, which tells you the sizes that they've figured out that has to be. So anyways, if you look down in there, now you can see the opening. That opening, well, let's see if I can do it. The opening right there is the one we saw in the firebox. Okay, so as it comes through there, that secondary air adds enough air. And then in the corners here, you see the, yeah, this is hard to do. The corners right there, you can see a chamfered piece, which starts a swirl, or they call it a vortex, which in turn makes a very hot fire. This thing is supposed to burn upwards of uh, 2,300 degrees as it comes up this chimney, or riser, they call it. So it gets very hot. All right, so after it comes out of this riser, as soon as it comes out very hot, clear up here, it starts to cool down. All right, so now you've got your cool down, and it goes all the way to the floor. There's an inlet. I've got a T on its back here. So the inlet 
for the exhaust is right there. And then the exhaust pipe will come right straight up from there. And it'll come into the corner. When it comes up out of the top, I've got a set of double 45s because I moved the stove. I didn't know where this was going to go when I did this. But when I put the chimney in, so I've got a set of double 45s that will adjust to hit that chimney from the stove. All right. So as you look, I've got a clean out back here. So that just goes straight through on the show us. Yeah, straight through. And I can get a vacuum in there to clean up any ash that may happen. Mostly it burns it up, but there will be a little bit. All right. So that takes care of the burning part. Uh, like I said, it's like a regular firebox up there in the front. The Venturi in between the two is what uh, creates the high temperature. And then the secondary air adds to the air that can burn in this chamber. Swirls up through, gets to the top, goes back down. And when it goes back down, that's where it's heating up this brick. I've got two layers two layers of brick, uh, my interior layer and my exterior, and I've got a space in between because the temperatures in here can be really hot and it will uh, cause expansion and contraction differently and I don't want everything cracking because it's all one solid piece. So, down underneath, you can see I've got that open underneath there. And what that does is insulates it off of the floor. My, my, my uh, base pad down there is, is uh, Portland cement with perlite. So that insulates it and holds it together. And then like I said, my everything else in here is fire brick. And then I've wrapped it for the insulation. So anyways, so far that's where I'm at. There will be, I'm getting ready to go, go across the top here and finish this front up. I'll be making a door, door frame and door to go around this. And uh, I am going to use, let's see, a piece of black pipe and a cap. I'm gonna put it up here on the front so that I have a clean out for any ash that may happen right here in the front because as this thing comes up, I may get ash dropping down on this side too. So I want a way to clean up anything there. So anyways, that brings everybody up to date. And uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask. Don't criticize my brickwork. It's my first time. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. God bless.